Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today, Data Storage, Goodbye Hardware, Hello Cloud. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. So all callers will be muted. So if you have questions, you should see a chat box on the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, feel free to ask questions as we go along, and we'll also have a Q&A at the end um, where we will ask the presenters any questions that you might have. If you lose your Internet connection, you want to maybe try refreshing your browser um, using the link that was emailed to you. Um, if you want to watch this at a later time, if you have to drop off, or if you want to watch it again, um, all of our webinars are hosted at www.techsoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. We'll also be sending an email with the presentation, uh, the recording, and any relevant links. Also, if you are on social media, feel free to tweet at us at TechSoup using hashtag TSWebinars. But like I said earlier, we will be monitoring the Q&A. That is part of uh, ReadyTalk. So just a little bit about TechSoup. We are in 236 countries and territories. We serve over a million nonprofits offering technology either uh, at a discount or um, at cost or sometimes donated. Um, so just to make sure that the chat chat box is working. If you guys could maybe tell me where you guys are calling in from, and I can read out a few. All right, so I see Tennessee, Texas, Seattle, Ontario, Birmingham, Alabama, South Carolina, Appleton, Wisconsin. That sounds very pleasant. Um, so yeah, okay, it looks like the chat box is working. Um, we are here in San Francisco uh, currently, but like I said, we have you know, locations around the globe. And uh, we work with several technology partners such as Adobe, um, Amazon Web Services who you will hear today, uh, Intuit, Microsoft, Symantec, um, and some of these other companies that you see here. They help make our mission possible. Um, if you are curious about what products are available to your nonprofit, feel free to visit our website at www.techsoup.org slash get-product donations where you can explore our nonprofit tech marketplace and see what technology um, is applicable to your organization and what's available to you. Um, so today we have two presenters from Amazon Web Services. They are going to be explaining cloud storage. Um, and you know, should you be interested in what they provide, we offer um, a grant of $2,000 in AWS credits. Um, so if you want more information on that, you can see the URL here. And uh, Jamin and Arif, whom, who I'm about to introduce, will go into greater detail about the program. But uh, here's just a little bit of information, and we'll go over this again at the end. So I would like to go ahead and present everyone that's on the call today. So. We have Jamin Gluck. So Jamin is with Amazon Web Services. He's been working with, it, with technology for nonprofits for the past three years. He's currently the Program Manager on the AWS Nonprofits team, enabling organizations of all sizes to evolve mission operations through cloud technology. We also have RF Huck, who is the Solutions Architect focused on providing technical guidance to nonprofits both big and small. He is passionate about working with nonprofits and helping them to use technology to achieve their mis mission. We also have Lashika Phillips. You've probably seen a few messages from her in the chat. She's going to be helping uh, with the chat behind the scenes. And then myself, I'm Seema Tucker, and I am the online learning producer here at TechSoup. So I am going to go ahead and pass it off to Jamin and Aris. Thank you so much, Seema. And hello, TechSoup. How is everyone? Again, my name is Jamin. And my name is Arif. And we are super stoked to be connecting with you guys to talk all about the cloud, and specifically cloud storage. But before we get into everything, I want to put your mind to work. So take a couple of seconds to think about all of the information you have on your computer. I'm talking pictures, and passwords, and files, and whatever data might be most valuable to your organization, and think about if something were to happen, would that information still be accessible? Would it still be able to be stored affordably? And most importantly, would it be secure? Right? Just think about it. Is all of your information accessible, affordable, and secure? We'll come back to that in just a moment. But 
to tell you a little bit more about what we'll be discussing today, I'll start off by saying this is really a webinar that's all about you. Here at Amazon, we start with the customer and work backwards. So I encourage you, RF and I both encourage you to ask a lot of questions. Uh, you certainly have the chat functionality to ask us questions during the webinar, but at the bottom left of all of these slides is an email address that goes straight essentially to me and my team uh, and to AWS Nonprofit's team to ask us any questions that you might have. We'll be discussing a cloud overview and more specifically storage in the cloud to the specific points of availability, cost, and security. And what I think is most important, we'll be discussing how to really get started. We hear a lot of conversation about the cloud this and the cloud that and cloud storage is passed around so frequently, but I think it's really important that we give you the tools necessary to really put your hands on those keyboards and get started. So that's a little bit of what we'll be doing today. As far as a disclaimer, I just want to say that this is really meant as an introduction to the cloud and to cloud storage. It's a 101 conversation, though RF will be able to describe a little bit more detail about the technology, but if you're looking for more complex information and if you have a more detailed question, rest assured, while we might not discuss that here today, AWS has all of the resources necessary to get you that information that you're looking for. So certainly ask a lot of questions. This is all about you. You are our customer. And uh, let's get things rolling. We'll start by just learning a little bit more about your organization. As you'll see, there's a brief little survey question that asks how familiar you are with Amazon Web Services. Feel free to be really honest. We don't have an ego. This is all to just help us understand who our audience is. All right, we, we're getting some heard of it, but your org is not currently using it. Excellent. I don't know what AWS is. Not a problem. That's exactly why, we're, why we are here. Okay, fantastic. So this is exactly the type of content we created. It, it seems like the audience is – I'm actually going to skip the results. It seems like the audience is in large part eager to, and, and able to learn a lot more about what AWS is. So that's fantastic. Glad to hear you're all here, and thank you so much for joining. The next question and the last one is, does your organization have a technical team? Right? We're just trying to learn a little bit more about what type of resources are available. You can think of the term team in, an ever, in whichever way you choose, um, but we want to just know what resources are available. Fantastic. Okay, we're getting a lot of yes, one to two people in size, no's. Okay, I'll be curious. If you're answering no, I'd love to learn uh, through the chat what, you, uh, what role you do hold if you're not on the technical team. Fantastic. Let's skip to results and see how we did. So again, in large part, it seems like this audience is very eager to learn more about the cloud and doesn't have much of a technical team. Not a problem at all. That's exactly the type of content we created for today's webinar. So you're in the exact right place. So let's jump to it. What is Amazon Web Services and what the heck is the cloud? Well, put in a sentence, Cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of services through a cloud platform, aka Amazon Web Services, via the Internet with pay-as-you-go pricing. But you're probably thinking to yourself, if you're anything like what I used to be, is what does even that mean? Well, an easy example to understand the cloud is to think that you're already using it. And, and the example is with your phone. Let's say your phone breaks all of a sudden. I would hope that you wouldn't lose access to all of your contacts and all of your text messages and all of your pictures, but hopefully that information is stored, you guessed it, in the cloud. And when you get a new phone, you can reclaim all of that information. Let's think about another hypothetical. It's a little bit darker, but bear with me. So let's say Next week, in the middle of the night when the office is empty, a meteorite is coming down onto Earth and specifically 
not only onto your office, but exactly where your computers are stored. And overnight, boom, there goes your computers. So I'll ask, what would happen to your organization's data and files? What would happen to its website, to its database management software, to your donor information, to the pictures from the gala last month, from the grant documents? I think you get where I'm going with this. And all of those applications and files don't have to be saved on your actual computer like they used to be. Thankfully, those files can be stored in, you guessed it, the cloud. When something is stored in the cloud, it means that it's stored on Internet servers rather than your actual hardware computer. Storing things in the cloud is equivalent to having a bunch, a bunch of servers that you use that are somewhere else and that you can access anytime and from anywhere that you have Internet. I like to think of the progression to the cloud with an analogy about the evolution of how we listen to music. So back in the day, we were reliant on record players, and then came cassettes, and then came CDs, and all of that hardware, the record players, cassettes, and CDs, took up storage and were complex to manage, and you always had to go and pick that one CD just to listen to that one song. But as time progressed and technology progressed, out came things like Pandora and Spotify, and we're able to listen to our music from anywhere and any time that we have Internet access. It's less expensive, and it's easier to manage. That's a great example, Jamin. That actually reminds me of another analogy, and as you can tell, we, we love analogies here at, at AWS. Uh, back in the day, when homeowners and families needed access to electricity to power their simple appliances, or just provide light, they would actually have to purchase and provision a personal generator for their homes. So each family that wanted to have light in their homes would need to have their own generator powering their homes. That means purchasing the generator, providing fuel for the generator, re repairing it, providing maintenance. So that all of that took a lot of maintenance, overhead, and costs. As technology progressed, we were eventually able to make use, use of centralized power grids. So we would have power companies providing power to millions of families and, not, and individual families wouldn't have to provision their own generators. They would, centralized power allowed families to use and pay for only what they use on demand and whenever they need it without having to worry about all that overhead. Fantastic. So, Hopefully you have a little bit more of a sense of what it means when people are talking about the cloud. Let's talk a little bit more specifically about cloud storage. So you know I like to put your mind to work. So begin to think, what does your nonprofit store that is the most valuable to your organization? Now, are you certain that if something were to happen, it would still be secure and accessible and all for an affordable price? The best way to understand what cloud storage is, is to discuss what cloud storage isn't. So let's go back in time to discuss what, what file storage used to be. Let's hop into our time machine and go back to your organization's office 20, 10, or 5 years ago, or really even 5 minutes ago. I'm sure that the way that it looked then is that there were file cabinets upon file cabinets with some of the most valuable data and information for your nonprofit. This image reminds me of when I used to go to the doctor's office, and I'm sure you can relate to this, and we would see walls and walls with patients' files there. Well, as time progressed and things became more modernized, we were less reliant on those types of hardware and file cabinets and more reliant on things like computers, and we were able to build the backup strategies for when disasters happen. And, and that's what turned into cloud storage, where we can access it without having to have that hardware. That's, that's a great analogy, Jamin. That brings us to the next one, where back in the day, we would store our money and our valuables under the mattress. And as you can tell, it's not very available. Let's say you left the house, you went on vacation, you went to work or went on a, were on a trip, and you needed some cash. You wouldn't be able to go back and dig up under your mattress and find that cash. 
and not to mention it's not really secure. If you weren't in the house, then who knows what could happen to that money. And now we have present day centralized banking where your money can be stored safely and accessible from anywhere, from the uh, bank's branches or ATMs that are, of course, readily available everywhere. So you can see how cloud storage kind of centralizes everything and allows you to have anytime, anywhere secure access to your most important documents and files. Fantastic. So taking a quick break here, we just kind of dished out a lot of information and analogies. I want to just ask if there's any questions about what we just discussed. Give you guys an opportunity, uh, if you don't want to email the email address in the bottom left, to ask in the, the chat, um, and then we'll be able to go a little bit deeper into things like availability, cost, and security. But we'll see if there's any types of questions really quickly. Okay, well, you can continue to ask them, not a problem. We'll address them as they come in. But now that we have a sense for what cloud, the cloud is and what cloud storage is, let's talk about why is it even important, and more specifically, why is it important for what we know to be unique that are nonprofit organizations? We're going to dive a little bit deeper into discussing the key values of availability, cost, and security as it relates to nonprofit organizations leveraging the cloud for storage. So the first one is availability. And when we talk about availability, we mean to say that your organization, whether it be your employees or your volunteers or perhaps even your donors, are able to access your organization's information from anywhere and everywhere, no matter where they are in the world or even in the U.S. Yeah, and that brings us to this image here. This, uh, this geographic image shows the various regions that AWS has throughout the world. Currently, we have 18 regions. And what that means is your data can be replicated throughout these regions, meaning it's safe and it's secure and always available. One common use case we see for customers are the customers that have multiple offices or multiple employees that work on different areas of the country. They're able to access their files from locations that are closest to them, from data centers that are closest to them. So that means a West Coast employee can access their files from a West Coast server, and that is replicated for both safety, redundancy, and ease and fast access to the East Coast so that they can both have access to data that is closest to them. Fantastic. Thanks so much. So yes, availability is, is critical. So really you can have your information available to all of your organization and its volunteers no matter where they are as long as they have Internet. Excellent. The next thing we want to discuss is the cost. We know that nonprofits are especially sensitive to cost because it's important that as much money as possible goes to the mission as possible. So when it comes to pricing and cost, for the cloud and for AWS, what's really valuable is that you don't have to sit on unused storage. What we call that is pay for peak. So in other words, sometimes your demand for storage will peak, and you have to have that storage available in order to meet that demand, but then what do you do with it when your demand is less? Well, with the cloud, your storage grows with you and shrinks with your demand. And that brings us to scaling. Scaling is basically what Jamin was just talking about. And that, th this graph shows the peak and the, your demand and usage and your cost aligning very closely to your usage. So you won't have to provision and pay for unused capacity. In regards to cost savings, AWS off also offers lifecycle policies for your data. So for example, if you have 100 gigabytes of files, realistically, you're only using, let's say, 10% of that frequently, and the rest of it is mostly archival data. So why would you have to pay for e fast and available data for data that doesn't need to be accessed except once every year or once you need to do a restore? So for that, we have an intelligent process that can actually look through your files 
and move old data to archives. And that gives you even more cost savings by moving less critical data or, le or data that doesn't need to be accessed frequently to more colder tiers of storage. And that cost savings is passed to you. And of course, we have customers that are both large and small all over the world. And through this economies of scale, we're able to save money while providing these services to you and pass the cost savings on to our customers. Fantastic. So that's just a really 101 overview of cost as it relates to the cloud. But we know, like I said, that it's incredibly important to understand exactly what you're paying for and making sure your money goes the farthest possible. So we encourage you to reach out with that email address if you have any outstanding questions about cost so we can give you the information to make sure that you feel comfortable with the cost design for our product. I will also mention here that we have a credit program through TechSoup that can provision and provide your organization with $2,000 in AWS credits, essentially like AWS bucks, to help you get started using the cloud. So um, again, we know that cost can be really important to your organization, uh, so we're certainly here to answer any additional questions. The third and last real key value the cloud has for, or excuse me, cloud storage has for nonprofits is security. And here at AWS, security is of the most importance to us. Every organization has certain information that it needs protected and out of the wrong hands. And when you think about security, not only are we thinking about natural disasters and ensuring that if there's a meteorite that our data is secure, but I want to encourage you to think about even the things like passwords and what about that volunteer who checked in for one week of service and then had to leave or that employee that was recently let go. Is your data truly secure and ensured that it's out of the wrong hands? And of course, as Jamin mentioned, security is of utmost priority at AWS. With AWS, we provide the tools and the resources necessary to create relevant policies for your data access. So your financial documents and your marketing departments and all of these groups within your organization can be segmented so that only relevant employees have access to sensitive information. So you can have policies that segment out each department, and you can also provision specific, very granular rules for each of your employees. And beyond that, for security, we also offer, of course, the backups and versioning. And versioning is basically where whenever you create a change in your files, you create a new version without overwriting your old version. We've all been through that very painful time where we worked very hard on the document and then saved it, and someone else may have accessed that file and saved their own version on top of it, and we lost all of our work. With the versioning, you can save yourself from any unintentional changes and unintentional overwriting or deletions. Excellent point, and, and that makes me think of that uh, second survey question, which talked about the technical team size. If you're working with a smaller technical team, from my experience working with nonprofit organizations, there's often a lot of users coming in and out. And with the security provided by AWS Cloud, you can ensure that only the person who is needed to have that certain information and created that certain information at times has access to it. So we find that security is especially important uh, to the smaller nonprofits. So fantastic. We talked about accessibility. We talked about cost. And we talked about security. So you have an overview of the three most valuable points of data, uh, excuse me, of cloud storage for nonprofits. But like I said at the beginning, I want to empower you that in your organization to really take action and to start because you've heard enough about the cloud. Let's put those hands on the keyboards. So getting started is really not as hard as you might think. I'm going to actually change what I. Uh, what the order I put it in, and in fact, make step four really step one. 
I want to encourage everyone that's on the phone to get their organization, if it's not you specifically, to reach out to Amazon, excuse me, to Amazon Web Services and the nonprofit team specifically to explain a little bit more about what your organization does, who you are, what your technical team looks like, and really what is your mission as it relates to technology. We are primed to work with your organization, understand your unique circumstances as a nonprofit, and then provide technical solutions to meet your needs and help you achieve your mission. So certainly, step one is just go about learning. Reach out to the nonprofit team with AWS and begin that journey. Once you've done that, I'll encourage you to go and open up an AWS account. It's absolutely free to get started. And by using this link, you can just begin to get a taste for what the user interface and user experience looks like. So I'm sure at the next water cooler conversation, you can say, oh, AWS, oh yeah, I have one of those accounts, no problem. After that, certainly want you to redeem your AWS credits through TechSoup. Like I said before, we know that cost is especially important when it comes to the ways you run your organization. So, Take advantage of what in large part is free money, and when you do get these credits, you're also entered into a program that allows for you to uh, open up uh, a lot of different resources that include training videos, as well as just more communication with the AWS team. And then once you have your credits and you have your account, we'll encourage you to begin learning. There's tons of videos on AWS you can essentially just Google it to learn um, and, and begin to build, as we call it, uh, different workloads. Uh, those are two terms that we use on a, when it comes to the cloud. You build workloads, which is essentially creating projects um, on AWS, and we will be right there next to you to ensure your projects come to fruition and you can leverage the cloud to impact your organization. But we know you can't always do it alone, so we want to make a quick plug for an organization called Digital Divide Data. And Digital Divide Data is a partner, a close partner of Amazon Web Services, and they use something that I think is incredibly cool, what they've coined as impact sourcing. It's a model that provides economically marginalized youth populations with trainings and jobs in the next generation technologies such as cloud. So DDD, or Digital Divide Data, has over 1,500 associates across Kenya, Cambodia, and Laos essentially ready to understand what your organization's goals are and when it comes to technology, and they can work with you to achieve those goals on AWS. Not only is their pricing really affordable, um, but their product and the services that they provide are top-notch. I've experienced it firsthand, so um, this is just a resource in short that if you don't have the manpower or the, you know, the staffing on your team to necessarily handle the cloud, then you can work with Digital Divide Data and they can help you uh, on your journey to the cloud. So that wraps it up. We wanted to make it short, sweet, and stock full of valuable overview information. I see that we have some questions. Um, Seema, I'll ask if you can jump back on the line and perhaps uh, read one that you think stood out to you, and then Arif and I will answer. Sure, yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so. We have quite a few questions that came in. So Vivian is asking, uh, we back up our server daily. Is there a backup on the cloud? And I, I think either of you can take that question. Yeah, so backing up your server daily. Of course, you can have different destinations for your backups, whether on another hard drive, an external drive. You can back up to tapes and then have that shipped off for like uh, safe storage. Uh, backing up to the cloud is is of course the latest and greatest way to do that because you don't need to manage these external drives. You don't need to manage any tape drives. You can actually back up directly to AWS. And there are softwares and tools that allow you to do that. We have our own gateways that allow you to do that. And it's, it, we can get very technical in how to implement this. So if you have specific questions on how to go about implementing direct from your organization to AWS backups, 
I'd encourage you to reach out to that email address, npoinquiries at amazon.com, and we, will, we can definitely have this conversation and guide you through um, how to set up that, that backup process. Awesome. So, yeah, and so they actually just jumped so, in and also wanted to know if the cloud server is backed up. Yes, so that is a great question. That's, that's a great question. So this is uh, something that AWS takes a lot of pride in is how robust our infrastructure is. S3, which is our storage backend, that is actually replicated throughout multiple availability zones in a region. So that means multiple data centers are backing up each other. So we're, we actually provide an SLA or in a guaranteed uptime of 99.99999 all the way up to 11 nines. So we frame, famously call that our 11 nines of durability. So this is the highest uh, durability SLA like that in the industry. So yes, we do back up our servers. I think a good way, and this is just Jamie here, a good way to kind of sum it up is absolutely. The, the AWS handles some of the most sensitive and private information, whether it's with government or education or for-profit businesses. So absolutely, Vivian, to your point, uh, backing up um, is certainly something we can do. Thanks so much for the question. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so we have a couple questions here, uh, David, and I think there was somebody else who was asking, uh, Kim, I believe, um, how are your services different than Dropbox or um, you know, Microsoft OneDrive? So maybe if you want to talk about some of the distinctions. Okay, that, those are great questions. So when you have software such as Dropbox or OneDrive, they they're a prepackaged software, so they have their strengths and their limitations and it's kind of a one-size-fits-all. When you make use of AWS services, you're kind of going to the core of the infrastructure, and you can use various tools to provide whichever functionality you need. So I saw a few questions about, can we sync our data without taking storage on our PCs uh, or on our laptops? And this is, of course, a consideration to, hey, do I need, like, a massive laptop to have everything synced because I need to sync everything. But if you want the flexibility of being able to access your files quickly without having to have a huge hard drive and backing up everything to every individual computer, AWS gives you that back end and the softwares and the tools are available to make it as efficient as possible. So basically, it's, it's very customizable, very flexible, and extremely affordable. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's see. So another question we got, uh, can multiple uses get the information at the same time? So I think you kind of touched upon that. Um, but if you want to maybe elaborate. Yes. Uh, so <clears throat> multiple users would be able to access the data at the same time. Um, you can have, of course, user policies. So you have the flexibility of allowing certain users and disallowing certain users. and in essence, um, it's a it's a very high user, concurrent user. It can handle as many concurrent users as you would need. Perfect. Um, and I think you know, for those who are sort of new to the cloud and are just kind of grasping what it is, is there like a recommended you know internet speed for accessing data um, that you guys would recommend? So that question, in regards to bandwidth, it's, it's highly variable on the type of data that you need access to. So for example, if you need to stream video or download large files, then of course having a faster internet access, having, having faster internet access will give you, uh, you know, a good download speed. Um, if you have a slower internet access, we do have options for hybrid storage. Hybrid storage basically allows you to provision a, a system in your office that caches all of the data, caches all of the frequently used data, and whatever isn't used is not stored on it. So you don't need to have a massive server that's serving all these files. Rather, you can have something that maybe is provisioned at 50% capacity, and then um, when you need access to a file, it downloads that and you have fast access to it. So there are ways around slow Internet access, and we get questions like this a lot. It does get pretty technical. 
So again, any anything that wasn't answered satisfactorily, um, please email us. Perfect. Um, so I think, Jamin, this is a good question for you. Uh, any, this is uh, Gabrielle who's asking, any suggestions for presenting this to upper management who is wary of the cloud and new tech in general? Hard data is always a good tool and has helped me make my case in the past. Do you have more available? So if you have any... Uh, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So um, I think you said Gabrielle um, or Gabrielle. Great question. In, in this from my perspective is one of the biggest hurdles, and I'm sure those on the phone can relate. The biggest hurdle being change management, right? This is in large part new. To revert back to my analogy, oftentimes management is so used to listening to their music on those cassettes and those CDs, and they're not so eager to create a Spotify login or a Pandora login. So I totally hear that, and we absolutely do have and uh, an ability to work with your organization to, to convey the, the value of the cloud and the messaging that's most suited for your leaders. Uh, to your specific question in terms of data, absolutely. We, we think data really leads um, an argument, and it really is where it starts and pretty much where it ends as well. So uh, to your question, absolutely. The case studies um, that we have are really robust. In other words, if you're an organization that is looking for an, uh, you know, data on why would we use um, the cloud for our website, or why would we use the cloud for storage, or why would we use the cloud for uh, data analytics or artificial intelligence, we have a library of case studies that you essentially can show um, to your leadership to explain this is how it's worked in the past, and this is why it would similarly work for us. Moreover, I think that these conversations can often be very unique and personal to the organization. So without beating a dead horse or not trying to beat a dead horse, I really encourage you to reach out to the nonprofits team here at AWS so we can fully understand your organization's uh, current state of affairs and then arm you with the resources needed to convey the value to those decision makers that you just mentioned. Perfect. Um, another question that we're getting is related to security. So uh, David was uh, sharing with us that their server was recently attacked by a crypto virus which encrypted all files. Uh, he said, fortunately, we had full offsite backups to sort it out. If we used AWS, would a crypto virus encrypt all files on AWS, or is there inbuilt protection? That's a great question, David. So there are inbuilt protections, um, and this is a very technical question. And basically, we have services that you put in front of your storage that can do intelligent analysis of the types of attacks and types of vulnerabilities that are out there and protect your data. Um, in this case where we're talking about S3 um, as your storage, S3 being our, uh, our object store, it isn't a compute resource, so it can't really take over anything. It is only accessible by you, and in case your credentials were compromised, they wouldn't be able to encrypt it and lock you out of it as long as you had access to your main credentials. So again, this is something that we can talk a lot more about, how to mitigate from security risks and breaches, and uh, we, I, I'd love to talk about this. But yes, you are protected. There are protections in place. Got it. Okay. Uh, we have another question. This is uh, pretty interesting. So can, the, can this cloud space be used as a domain server? So by domain server, do you mean as a DNS server? Uh, just to, to clarify. But um, I, I can just start answering. Um, yes. Okay, yes. So by a DNS server, we do offer, AWS is of course not just storage. We actually have more than 100 services that we offer from artificial intelligence to image recognition to hosting your website on a standard web server. And of course, we offer DNS services as well. And our DNS service is not just hosting your website URL. It also allows you to intelligently route your web requests. So for example, if a website were to be down, your server was down, 
like in your office, you can actually have the DNS service do a health check and move it to another location automatically. So we're not just storage, we have a lot of other services as well. Great, okay. Uh, so there's a couple questions here about uh, archived data. So is there a cost in access time for archived data? And some, someone else is also asking, can we choose to have some files archived from the start? So if you want to maybe talk a little bit about archived files. Go. Yeah, of course. So for archived data, you're going to have, uh, you're going to make use of our service called Glacier. And in regards to moving files directly to Glacier instead of using a policy to move things slowly, you can have, you can directly archive data. So that's definitely a possibility. You also have the option to uh, bulk upload all of your backups and then just archive that right from the start. Um, the second, the other question, uh, could you please repeat that other question? Yes. Yeah. So is there a um, cost to, to access the archived data? So, there, so the, metri the, the pricing tiers for each of the different types of data is, is outlined in our pricing chart. And in regards to the archive, you are paying a much lower fee for the storage itself. And at the retrieval time, you would pay based on how fast you need your retrieval. So the three tiers of retrieval are one to five minutes, expedited, and then there's uh, three to five hours for uh, standard, and then there's bulk at five to 12 hours, I believe. So I can, we can share these uh, pricing informations with you. Just shoot us an email, and we can do a deep dive on your requirements, on how much data you have, and just price it all out for you. Perfect. Um, okay, so the next, uh, we've gotten a couple questions about uh, integrations. Um, so uh, one person was asking, can AWS interface with QuickBooks? And then we had another question, um, can AWS integrate with Office 365 email backup? So do you want to maybe share uh, a little bit about integrations? Yeah, sure. So this goes back to the point of AWS offering you the infrastructural tools and the capacity to run any of your workloads. So in regards to hosting QuickBooks, so if you're actually talking about, like, I, I'm not sure which aspect of QuickBooks, but if you're just backing up QuickBooks data, you can of course back that up onto our storage services. If you actually want to host QuickBooks on AWS, then we offer virtual machines to launch QuickBooks and have it hosted with us. So there's tons of different ways to host different applications. We can of course talk more deeply about it. Um, and in regards to the, um, the Office 365 integrations, again, you, you will be able to back up whatever types of data you need to. And there are Active Directory, Active Directory integrations that you can make use of. Um, so if you have if you're using Office 365 for email or for any of their services like OneDrive, then you most likely have Active Directory, um, whether hosted with Azure or on-premise. You can have an, a directory sync that synchronizes your credentials, and you can actually host through, in both places different applications, and it can be a seamless experience. So you, you'll be able to back up, um, because we provide the infrastructural tools, you'll be able to interface, it, interface with it using whatever applications and tools. You would just have to point to it properly. And of course, since that is very technical, depending on which application and how to do it, and there's like a million ways to do it, we can um, shoot us an email and we'll go from there. Gotcha. Okay, so when, when people contact you, if they aren't technically savvy, you guys can kind of walk them through the process and, and help them get set up so that Yes, exactly. So, yeah, when you create a relationship with AWS, you would reach out to uh, your account manager. Every, every customer, when they reach out, they're assigned an account manager. And with that account manager, you have a solutions architect such as myself. And our sole purpose is just to guide you and provide the resources to help you understand and guide you through this journey. So uh, we're here for you. Perfect. Okay. Um, there's a. I think we'll, we'll take a couple more questions. So. Um, does Amazon Cloud Service involve each user having a synced copy of the files on their individual PCs? So this one that we had touched upon earlier where we compare the differences between Dropbox and OneDrive, you would be able to use um, softwares and tools to provide access 
directly to the cloud with minimal cache space. So you wouldn't need to cache every single or have copies of every file on every computer that wants to sync. You can have minimal storage headroom and access your data um, without having to provision much storage. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and I think we'll do one more question. So uh, someone is asking, would server 2012 be able to recognize AWS as a backup drive for the on-site server? Does that, does that make sense, or do you need more clarification? I, I would need more clarification. But um, so okay. AWS provides a hybrid option for on-premise backups, and that is called our storage gateway. And you would be able to use any uh, common uh, backup service, such as Veeam or Backup Exec or Net Backup, as well as um, server backup tools, uh, Microsoft server backup tools. And it can directly backup to the storage gateway. So again, it depends on specific scenarios and how you're currently backing up and, and where you want to go. But the storage gateway offers you a lot of flexibility on interfacing with the cloud because it's kind of an on-premise on -premise application, and you can uh, send all your data to that through an iSCSI interface. Again, that's very technical. So um, let's, let's talk over email. OK, perfect. And actually, if you, don't, if you guys don't mind, can I squeeze in one more question? Um, a lot of our nonprofits, you know, have volunteers who are out in the field. Um, so, you know, if there's like a disaster recovery organization um, or someone who's, you know, out on a farm volunteering, um, is it possible um, to for for you know volunteer forms or whatever it might look like, um, or if it, if it's you know on an iPad, can uh, various computers back up from different locations, uh, specifically laptops that are out in the field? Yes, you'll be able to use AWS as a backend for all of your backups. And um, in the case of many different computers in, in many locations, you'd probably want to install an agent from any of the softwares available that use AWS, and it would directly back up to AWS. So you can have the sync model or the backup model. Um, depending on what your use case is, we can kind of explore that further, and I'd be happy to make recommendations based on your use case. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry, we're getting really good Sorry. questions, so I'm going to ask you one more. Oh, um, keep them coming. This is great. Okay, so when it comes to uh, searchability, and you know, if people are uploading their files, how easy is it to search for stored data? So when you search for data within our storage structures, you can, of course, search by the name. But when you upload, you also have the option of adding metadata or tags to your data. So there is a search functionality within the console itself. If you want to make it more robust, you can add your own tags and metadata. And, and of course, like the standard search that's available that you're used to through Windows or um, you know, just searching through the file names. Perfect. OK. Excellent. OK, so I think we are, are good on questions. We'll give people a few minutes back of their time. Um, thank you, RS and Jamin for the presentation. That was super helpful. Again, here is their email if you guys want to email them directly if you have questions after the webinar. Um, just a few things before we uh, leave today. If you, if you guys don't mind just chatting one thing that you learned in today's webinar, it's always really fun for us to see and for the presenters to see um, what was new to you. Uh, we also have a post-event survey, so any feedback that you have for us really helps. Um, we want to make sure that you're getting information that you need and that you can you know, walk away with and, and implement right away. So any feedback that you have for us, uh, please let us know. And I know um, Jamin and RF will, will really appreciate that as well. Uh, if you're on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, please give us a, I think it's like, heart, and follow uh, in that exact order. So uh, please give us a, a follow. We post a lot of articles and tips and tricks and how to's and that sort of thing. And we have a few webinars that are coming up. So uh, you can see the list here. We also have the schedule on our website. So if you'd like to join us, we have um, an HTTPS webinar next week, a design thinking webinar the week after, um, how you can build a successful monthly giving program, um, 726, and then also how to produce uh, captivating digital content. So feel free to register for any of those. Those are all free. 
Um, again, thank you to Jamin and to Ara for the presentation. Um, thank you to Lashika for helping out on the back end with chat. And thank you to our webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk. And thanks to you guys for joining today. And yeah, hope to see you again soon. <laughs>